Hello, I'm Tony DiMaria here at the Innova Cardiovascular Symposium, and I have the opportunity to talk to this year's honoree of the Innova Cardiovascular Symposium, the, the person who's receiving the Innova Heart and Vascular Institute Pioneer Award. Dr. Alan Spear, who's the Chairman of Cardiovascular Surgery at ANOVA. Dr. Spear, uh, one of the concepts that's emerging so rapidly in, in cardiology is the heart team, the interaction between cardiologists and cardiac surgeons. Uh, do you find that that's really important in your practice? I think that, um, and forgive me because I've got laryngitis and I've had it for two days and so I'm going to do the best I can. I think that the whole concept of the heart team has really transformed how we practice. Um, it was de devised around the structural heart uh, concept with these transcatheter valves and it was mandated for payment reasons actually through CMS that the surgeons and cardiologists both had to collaboratively work together for the care of these patients. Well, what's happened is this integral and, and, and necessary connectivity that we should have had before and thought we had before, but never like this. We have the surgeons and the cardiologists see the patients before. We're together in the operating theater to put these devices in. We follow them collaboratively after surgery and there's never been more uh, overlap and in integration that we've seen uh, until now. It's such a um, uh, change that we've really expanded this concept into coronary disease, not just valvular disease. What is the appropriateness of uh, both PCI intervention and surgery? Should surgeons be seeing the patients on the cath lab table once the cath has been completed to then work with the cardiologist to decide whether they're best served medically with uh, angioplasty and stents or with bypass surgery. So we're really seeing this expand into all aspects of how we practice. So have you found that the uh, heart team has expanded its, its role not only in structural heart disease but in coronary disease? Absolutely. Our uh, interaction together, our collaboration together uh, has been so important that we're now looking at how this can function uh, with those patients with ischemic heart disease. Uh, we're looking at how we can be available to come to the cardiac cath lab uh, give an immediate opinion as to whether these patients would be better served with medical management versus catheter-based intervention versus bypass surgery. Uh, we're not there yet. There are two hospitals in the Commonwealth of Virginia that currently do that, but it's still so new that we're, it's in, uh, to have a surgeon always that available has been a little bit uh, challenging for us. Yeah, I would imagine. Now, the heart team includes more than the cardiologists and the cardiac surgeons. Do you find that imagers are important during the procedure and guiding the procedure? I should have been more clear. Uh, it's not just the physicians. We have our nurse practitioners. We have our uh, uh, research uh, nurses. And then we have uh, the invasive and non-invasive cardiologists, as well as then our imaging radiologists. Uh, that are looking at our CT angiograms uh, that help us uh, to define uh, appropriateness of access and size of prosthesis. Now you've been practicing for many years. Uh, have, have you found that surgical techniques have really evolved in a major way over the last five to ten years? I think that the uh, real transformative change has been in access. What was through the standard uh, sternal approach for routine open heart surgery is now uh, routinely done through the minimally invasive approach. I do two or three aortic valve replacements a day and uh, those patients that need um, bypass surgery obviously have to have a bigger incision but for those that just need the valve uh, replacement alone or the valve replacement with the ascending aortic aneurysm, we can do these through less invasive procedures. Um, the same is holding true. There's a whole different approach for coronary bypass that's less invasive as well. Uh, our approach to aneurysms, 
particularly in the distal uh, arch and descending thoracic aorta, is predominantly through stent grafts now uh, that can be done with uh, catheter access through the growings. So our, the technology that is catheter-based with less invasive procedures have been the major changes that we've uh, encountered. And you anticipate that, that this will continue? Do you think that patients with valvular heart disease, for instance, in the future will more often be subjected to percutaneous or transapical approaches? I, uh, we've, I'm not sure about the transapical approach because we've, we're going to start next week is one of the first places in the United States just going through a little incision like a, a tracheostomy incision and can go down onto the aorta um, uh, without opening the breastbone, without going to the apex of the lung and put these catheter-based valves in that way. Then the patient's going to be discharged the next day. But I think that the uh, demand for this new technology is getting a little bit ahead of the results we have with such technology. And we're constantly balancing uh, these new devices versus what are the standards and what are the real results of such new devices. Well, thanks very much for sharing this with us. And again, congratulations on receiving the Pioneer Award. Very, very honored. Thank you very much for having me.